I spoke with Brittany Griner. She's safe. She's on a plane. She's on her way home. After months of being unjustly detained in Russia, held under intolerable circumstances, Brittany will soon be back in the arms of her loved ones, and, uh, and she should have been there all along. President Biden speaking a short time ago following the breaking news out of Russia. WNBA star Brittany Griner on her way home after she was swapped for Russian arms dealer Victor Bout. James Langford is a Republican U.S. Senator from Oklahoma, and he's with us now. Senator, welcome. Thanks for coming on today. Your top-line thoughts as we've learned of the prison release of Brittany Griner. Always good to be able to see an American that's unjustly detained that's coming home. The problem with this is the Biden administration swapped someone that was known as the merchant of death. <clears throat> that was a Russian citizen. That was a Russian arms dealer. Uh, that our intelligence and our homeland security personnel and federal law enforcement had worked for years to be able to arrest because he's led to the death of so many people around the world. That's the person that was swapped in this. So I'm grateful that we have an American citizen coming home. But we obviously, this administration negotiated the turnover of someone who's led to the death of, we don't know how many people on this. It was an extensive, very long investigation to be able to get him and arrest him. Sir, what does this mean for our own national security, uh, considering Bout has now returned to Russia, to the Kremlin? Do you believe he could act again and cause harm to the United States or uh, perhaps other countries all across the world? I would assume Putin would bring him in, would do a big press conference with him, would reconnect him then with some oligarchs and start doing arms dealers, arms dealing all over the world again. Uh, I would assume this will be some big celebration uh, in Russia for reclaiming this person. Uh, in addition to that, Russia can say, we turned over a basketball star, uh, but the Marine that's been unjustly detained uh, in Russia since 2018, they continue to be able to hold. Uh, so we have a United States Marine that retired uh, that is still in custody in Russia. That was not part of this deal. And we turned over this massive global arms dealer to them. Uh, that was one of the top people that we've been pursuing for a very long time. You're, of course, uh, alluding to the fact that Paul Whelan still remains mm -hmm. in Russian custody. President Biden mentioned uh, Mr. Whelan during his speech today. Let's play that sound. I'll get your thoughts. This was not a choice of which American to bring home. We brought home Trevor Reed when we had a chance early this year. Sadly, for totally illegitimate reasons, Russia is treating Paul's case differently than Brittany's. And while we have not yet succeeded in securing Paul's release, we are not giving up. And we'll keep negotiating in good faith for Paul's release. I guarantee that. I say that to the family. I guarantee you. Do you have some additional questions about why there's been such a delay in Whelan's case, Senator? I, I'm grateful to hear the president say he's going to continue to work for Paul Whelan's uh, release. But literally, what Biden just did was equated an international arms dealer leading to the death of who knows how many people, Russian, that we released for someone that was being held in Russia for a small marijuana charge. I don't know what Biden is going to have to release uh, to Russia to try to get the release of a United States Marine uh, that is still being held in custody. It, it completely is a political prisoner there as well. And uh, so that's the challenge now that Biden is now up the ante for what it takes to be able to get some someone out of Russia. And I would tell you, as an American citizen, we always discourage any kind of travel to Russia. But for any American citizen even considering going to Russia, know that now that you are likely to be a political pawn to be held against a murderous thug that uh, we have arrested at some point uh, to be able to exchange for your uh, release. So it's a very big issue for us. Yeah, indeed. The Whelan family has still been advocating for Paul's return for years now. Uh, we'll wait and see if something happens or develops in his own case. In the meantime, though, let's pivot to what's happening at our own southern border. Earlier this year, the Department of Homeland Security indicated they were prepared to deal with tens of thousands of migrants expected to cross the border following the elimination of Title 42. Now the department walking that statement back, asking for a delay. As you see here, ready or not, Homeland Security insists they're ready for border surge, then ask for delay. The metric of 18,000 encounters per day was designed for planning purposes to describe a scenario. It does not reflect the number of encounters CBP anticipates seeing. Uh, Homeland Security apparently told yourself, sir, in a recent memo. Could you expand on that realistically? How many encounters is CBP expected to see once the Title 42, that pandemic era policy, is lifted? Yeah, they, they're lifting not only the Title 42 era policy, but they've already listed the Trump policies as well. That was a Romanian-Mexico policy. They continue to be able to lift that. 
Let me just do a quick history on this. Uh, during the Obama administration, the Department of Homeland Security said it's a very bad day when we have 1,500 people illegally cross the border. We can't manage that. We now have between 4,500 and 6,000 people a day that are illegally crossing the border every single day. And now the estimates from DHS is we could have as many as 18,000 people illegally crossing the border. At the same time, President Biden continues to say it's not a problem. It's not a major issue. He goes to Arizona and sees a manufacturing location and says there's no need to go to the border because it's not an issue because they want an open border policy. They, they continue to say, no, we don't. You look at their actions, not what their words are. They want an open border policy. We have over 2 million people that have illegally crossed this year, and they have no plan because I've asked point blank the Secretary of Homeland Security, what is the plan after Title 42 is released? He repeated back to me the same thing that they've been doing for the last year and said, this is our plan of what we're going to do. My statement then was clearly that didn't work. Why do you think that's going to work when we have three times as many people coming at our border? They're going to just release them into the country and to say, not our problem. It's not a big deal. Drugs are flowing into our country in epic numbers. People are flowing into our country in epic numbers. And just to be clear, these folks are not vetted from their home country. They're checked for a criminal history to see if they've committed a crime in America before, but we have no idea of the country that they're from, whether that is from Russia or Venezuela or Cuba or Mexico or wherever maybe. We have no idea what the criminal record is of these individuals crossing our border illegally, and Homeland Security is not checking. It's another national security concern quite frankly. Uh, as we are taking a live look, House Republicans laying out their own plan to address the ongoing border crisis. We'll wait and see if there will be any bipartisan efforts to address the crisis in the upcoming year. Senator James Langford, thanks for joining us this morning. Appreciate your time. Thank you.